Welcome to my world with Nat, Relocation Concierge. I hope you're doing well today. This is like completely last minute, but we are live from the International School of Sosua with Mr. Ruiz, the headmaster here. So welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Tell us all the things. So we actually visited the International School of Sosua almost a year ago when we first arrived in Dominican. And we one of the things that we loved about it were the grounds. Mm -hmm. There's this peaceful s sort of feeling when you're walking around here. Yeah. And is that created like sort of on purpose or it's just organic? Uh, it's, I would say it's a bit of both. Yeah. Um, it's definitely organic to the point now that it's part of who we are. Okay. So even as we as we continue to grow as an institution, uh, every every thought process that we have, we say, but we can't lose this. You okay. know, we can't lose our family atmosphere, our outdoors. We can't lose the fact that you know we we, we push for the idea that you know we're a big community, a big family. Yeah. Um, and that we use our doors as much as possible. So even when it's like redesigning, like oh my god, enrollment went up. Like what do we do now? Yeah. And that's happening, right? There yes. are more and more people sh coming yes. down here. Yes, I would say the Dominican Republic has definitely boosted yeah. uh, in the last two years, and, and we're seeing a larger influx of it. So, uh, just our community went just from last year to this year, it increased thirty-five percent. Okay. So uh, it was a dramatic increase. So we had to uh, things around. It's like, oh, what do we do here? It's great. And that's a great problem it's to a, have. It's an awesome problem to have. Yes. So, what is attracting people? to coming to ISS. Mm -hmm. So what is the thing that is sort of making you stand out for making parents? Because parents are watching and they want to know, you know, wh why are we choosing ISS? Yeah. Oh, well, there's there's a lot of pieces to it um, because we cater to mul multiple nationalities, right? So yeah. we have around 30 different nationalities. So when you have that, it's the idea of being able to offer an education uh, that fits a certain level of academic rigor, which is mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the toughest things that parents expect. You know, yeah. They want their children to be prepared to go wherever they go, to yeah. do whatever it is that that child wishes to do and, and be the person they want to become. Um, but at the same time, it's also the piece of like, are you teaching the whole child? Yes. You know, are you, is it just academics? Yeah. Or you know, are they learning to just love the outdoors, love being human, you know, love their planet, love their community? Um, with I would say we have a large, a large population that's Dominican. So the large population that's Dominican, they are people that live in tradition. You know, so ISIS has been around since 1989. Yes. And we are now starting to see like the children of alumni. Oh wow! Okay, yes. that's interesting. Yeah. So that's a cool thing that, that you know they're coming back and they're saying like I want to come back and they come in and you see it and say like this is where the cafeteria used to be and this is where my classroom used to be. And, yeah. And some of our teachers have been here for 20, 25 years. So sometimes... So there's a level of commitment and loyalty to, to, the, to the school itself yeah. and to the community. Which, which goes to the other pieces. They love the family atmosphere. Mm. Even those parents who come in and say, like, I want a college prep school. I want my child to be able to go to A, B, C, you know, Ivy League institutions. They love the fact that, yeah, we're going to prep your child for this. But at the same time, we're also preparing your child for the real world you know, yes for all absolutely. the other things that, that happen um they obviously love the campus yeah. you know, that's that's always a, an easy seller you know they walk in and they they see all the green they see the trees they see the benches they, they see the kids outdoors yeah especially uh, i would say especially the expats if you're coming from a cold country yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like us uh -huh. uh, just the fact that school can be out indoor outdoor just uh -huh. just changes your whole perspective on I even feel like it changes the perspective of the educating of the child because there's mm -hmm. just this different we right now would not be outside except for recess and lunchtime that would be the only time the kids go outside because it's just too cold yes. Andrew, I think it's getting on but yeah. that's a whole conversation yeah. for another yeah. day yeah. okay so there's a there's alumni there's a, a huge kind of you're seeing the ro that, not the rotation but it's that organic sort of people coming in and out yeah teachers have been here for a while um what is like a typical school day look like for for maybe the young ones you know if you're, a lot of the parents i'm speaking to have younger kids mm -hmm. so what does a, a typical school day look like well um we go from year one year olds with eight to eight months 
all the way through seniors, right? So we have that, that whole campus here. And, and like right behind here, but that's the early childhood section. Okay. Primaries behind me and secondaries over there. Um, all days start at 8 a.m. and they end at 3 p.m. Now, what does that day look like? You know, you will always have in all that curricula is you'll have your literacy, you'll have your maths, mm -hmm. you'll have uh, your STEMs. Yeah. So we do follow the next generation science standards. Um, the beauty behind next generation science standards is that you have to teach the science through manipulatives. It's about actually getting your hands dirty. The hands it's on, about, yeah. Yeah, it's about building something. It's building the idea of how does the math and the literacy connect to what I'm doing. So, you know, at ISS, we're inquiry-based learning and project-based learning. Yeah. So with that idea is that you don't teach everything separately. Yeah. You know, uh, things connect with each other. Uh, teachers talk to each other across grade levels, uh, across languages as well. Yeah. Uh, so your child will be exposed to all the subjects. Um, Spanish is a very important thing. We not only teach uh, Spanish language, but with Spanish literature. So we're accredited by the Ministry of Education of the Dominican Republic. So that also means that all of our students not only receive the U.S. accreditation diploma that we, that we have, but also the Dominican okay. um, diploma. That's also a great piece that parents love because that means they can go anywhere in yeah. the world because they, their children already have two diplomas. Yeah. Right? Uh, everybody has snack time in the morning, <laughs> 15, 20 food minutes. Food is important. Oh, yes, yes. And our cafeteria is phenomenal. So, yeah. you know, it's not like junk food. It's not bags. It's like, for example, today, uh, yes, they had uh, sandwiches, they had eggs, but like this, I don't know, this afternoon was like Cuban, uh, like it's a Cuban theme. Themed, okay. You know, it's like the ground beef with the rice and the beans and eggs, you know. Nice. We had Sancocho last week. Um, we move things around. So every child obviously has you know, their snack time and their lunch time. Yeah. It's about 20 to 45 minutes. We believe in giving them time, time to be outdoors. Absolutely. Um, as, Absolutely. A, as opposed to those really short times. Um, they have lots of phys ed. I can't imagine why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lots of phys ed. So we push for phys ed, yeah. uh, arts and music. Well, there's uh, a sense campus. of well-being, right? When you're outdoors a lot, there's a sense of wanting to be well and yes. and be active it's uh -huh. e i feel like it's easier to be active here than it was back home mm -hmm. and that's my personal perspective but i know that we, my husband and i have become much more active since we've been here than mm -hmm. we were yeah. um when we were back in canada mm -hmm. so as you go in you know from the younger grades to the older grades those they're getting ready they're, they're doing the preparatory mm -hmm. um and when does that start is that like a grade like right in high school or beginning of high school or closer to the end well we for example we do uh, vertical alignments which is primarily in an easy way to say is uh, that the teachers look at the subjects and they say okay a kindergartner has to reach this point yeah. when by the time they're a senior so what are the milestones that they need to achieve? Perfect, okay. So, in 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, all of our students really receive a college preparatory course with our in-house guidance counselor. So, nice. we have somebody on staff who's a guidance counselor, a college preparatory counselor. Mm -hmm. uh, we start the PSATs in 8th grade. Okay. So, even now, April 25th, all of our 8th graders and 9th graders always take the pre SATs. All of their 10th graders and 11th graders take their PSATs. Um, There's a lot of SATs going on there. Yeah. <laughs> and then most of the seniors take the SATs as well. So as early as 8th through 12th, all the way through 12th. They're getting ready. They're getting ready for whatever it is. Now, the reason why we give a college preparatory course is because not everybody goes to college. Right? Fair. So it's the idea of, well, what is your vocation? What is your passion? You yeah. Know, what is it that you love to do? What is it you would love to do? Mm. And our guidance counselor, what she does is she works with the students. Uh, one to two times a week with those 10th, 11th, and 12th graders, and then works with the families as well, right? To nice. merge the idea. Because you always have kids who say, I want to do this when I grow up. Yeah. And then you have parents who are like, Yes, but I don't want you to go here. Or, <laughs> or, I, I, or you need to do this. Yeah. You know, so it's having that conversation. That's good. That's like a closing the loop on it. It's yeah. important to keep it involved. Yeah. And we scale it down. We have a, what is called the ISS Delegates. Okay. So ISS Delegates is also a program that our guidance counselor runs from kinder all the way through eighth grade as well. Which is the idea of 
you know, what are you, who are you as a citizen, a mm -hmm. citizen of this school, of the city, of this province, of this country, and of this world, mm -hmm. you know, and just learning the general ideas of respect, responsibility, you know, empathy. Mm -hmm. uh, Makes me think that they all have unique voices, right? So they yes. all are getting ready to sort yeah. of use that voice. Yeah. And, and with that, those delegates, that's one of those, the beauty of it, is that they have those times to speak back with their class yeah. and it's not always the same thing. so they cycle through so that everybody gets a Achoo. voice that's and awesome. to be able to work on it. so something special happened today what right before we stood, we met yes where yes. who did you send off yes i just sent off my model united nations students nice. uh they're going to new york to the national high school mun in new york city so they'll be able to actually go to the united nations building uh the it is one of the programs that's been here for, for many years. I'm an MUNer myself. I love it. Uh, I love it. It's, it's the idea of being able to take any topic, any perspective, and yes. be able to defend it. You know? mm -hmm. So you have to really work on not just what you're saying, but also how you're saying it. Absolutely. And who you're saying it to. Mm -hmm. So you have to work on that. But the MUNers also have to work on it, the writing. So yeah, so we just had sent a group of students to New York. Uh, it's been a it's been a really heavy couple of weeks actually. <laughs> um, we just did our Hurricane Cup, which is an invitational yes, uh, tournament. Uh, we had nine different schools from across the country come in for uh, basketball, uh, volleyball, yes. and soccer from Santo Domingo, Santiago, Puerto Plata, uh, the Puerto Plata province. Everybody from Maranata, Cienega to uh, Puerto yeah. Plata City. So it was beautiful to have a campus full of people. Yes. You know, give it a half. Live, in yes. person. Yeah, yeah. All, all the courts were, like, the JV basketball court was full. The, yeah. the, the uh, covered court was full. The soccer field was full. You know, parents were here. They were bringing their kids. Uh, you know, the food going. And there, was, and there was carnival on the weekend, too. And there was also the and carnival on the, the weekend. Carnival, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, didn't, so, we didn't make it. We weren't feeling well, but yeah. we'll be here next year, so yeah. we're not worried. Yeah, so we had our kids, like, we had that. Those were, that was middle school and high school. And yeah. then we had our early childhood and primary kids representing ISS at the carnival as well yes. so it was like we were all over the place but it's, it. it's good that you have well, that atmosphere that sense of community I find I I see it everywhere we go mm -hmm. no matter the institution no matter the area there mm -hmm. there uh, the Dominicans really have that sense of family yes. already rooted in them that you feel like it even something as simple as you know we have somebody come tidy up our house you know once a week and She's sort of part of our family yeah. now, you know, mm -hmm. we've moved and she sort of comes with us and yeah, yeah. and that sense is just so, um, I, I didn't have that back home, but mm -hmm. here I really feel like that there's that sense of, and people look out for you and they want the best for you and they want yeah. to help you, so mm -hmm. I'm very grateful for that. I'm very grateful for you to have done this with me today. Yeah. What is coming up in the next, because I mean, we're approaching the summer now, so... Well, We're certainly not winding down. Anything no, no. highlights coming Oof, up yeah. or any deadlines maybe parents need to know about? Um, so, for example, we, you know, all schools in the Dominican Republic begin, for example, obviously their admissions yes. February onward. Yeah. Um, ISS, we do begin from February. You know, every, every month we have a different plan or a different uh, packet of discounts. We started as early as like February was like 10% off, you okay. know, for full payment. Every month is a different payment. Uh, we have our friends and family program. You know, if somebody recommends you, that they that family, you, yeah. they refer you, they get a discount. Uh, if there are two, three, four children, then there's, there's okay. discounts depending on, on that. And group as all well. on the website, or they should contact admissions. On the website, most of the information is okay. there. Uh, if you want like very specifics, then you yeah. on our website you also have the admissions inquiry form that you fill out. And Barbara Farina, who's our admissions officer, she will contact you, yep. set things up for you, or, you know, come in uh, toward the school. Uh, you uh, talk to the principals. Um, your kids usually when they when they take their admissions test if it's first grade onward um, they can also spend part of the day in the classroom nice. so that we can see how they interact with the rest of the kids um, I love that you know, kind of program that's really important. yes because it's, you know we're, we're a small community you know yeah. we're very family based you walk in through the door our security guard knows every person's name you know I that know is... every child's name I know every child's parents name you know uh, and you mentioned earlier, like even somebody who goes, a caregiver who goes into the house like once a week. Yeah. You know, we, it's to the point where in drop off and pick off, all of our teachers know no. who are yeah. those nannies, those babysitters. Yeah. They're like, oh no, that's the grandfather, that's the yeah. uncle. They come in, they come out. So 
Uh, it's one of the beauties of, of ISS is that everybody knows everybody. You know, the kids will line up for the cafeteria and the yep. cafeteria ladies will literally know, I know what you eat, I know what you don't <laughs> eat. Or like, oh, don't worry, I have this over here. So we, I we, love it. Yeah, it's That's everybody so knows cool. everybody. But it, the cool thing about most schools here in the Dominican Republic, not just ISS, is that, like you said, Dominicans are family-oriented. Yes. So being family-oriented is like, that is something that is just beautiful. Yes. You know, with the schools that I've worked in, all the schools that I've worked in, that is just a common trend. Yeah. You know, it's like they, they, everybody knows who you are. A high school teacher will know the preschool students. Yes. You know, to have that Even like, yeah, our daughter has actually said to me, oh, mommy, you know, these these girls are in your class and they they came to see me. And, you know, even though there's no relate, but they, they, they watch over her or they, you know, they, they speak to her. They give her time. Yeah. And that, I was very touched by that when I found out about that because, you know, high schoolers, yeah. sometimes, you know, they're a little yeah. bit more independent. They don't want, you know, to kind of meddle with the young ones. Yeah. But this I was very impressed with. So if you're looking for more information about the International School of Sosua, make sure to click on the link below in the description. If you want to contact admissions, the email will also be there. Um, Mr. Ruiz, thank you so much for doing this with me today. No, you're welcome. Thank and. You Whatever you choose to do today, have an incredible day, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.